My name is Noah McCarty. So a couple months ago, uh, my sister asked me to clear out a section of our backyard so she could have an area to put her garden in. And I did, and when I was doing this, there was, I noticed there were several different types of plants and all that, but some of them had much deeper roots that were much harder to remove. And some of them had real shallow roots, but and that were just really easy to remove, get out of the way and all. And this rem it, I was reminded of this story when I was uh, studying Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30 in the parable of the tares and the wheat. Uh, first, I'm gonna just read 24 through 29 and talk about how there's a difference between the wheat and the tares and how it's sometimes difficult to understand the difference at first, uh, but it will become evident later. It said, he presented another parable to them saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed uh, tares among them, among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprang up and bore grain, uh, then the tares became evident also. And the slaves of the landowner came to him and said, sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Then how does it have tares? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, do you want us then to go and uh, gather them up? But he said, no, that's why you are gathering up the tares you can uproot the wheat too. In this, we know, I noticed that the tares and the wheat are pretty much identical when they're young until they start to grow up and age and blossom more. And then it's obvious which one's which. And I also noticed what the tares can do if they are moved or anything happens to them when, when if you don't have good roots and that's, they, they, were, they can uproot people and just mess stuff up in general. And on, then I noticed on the day of harvest, it, they first go out and get rid of the tares and throw them into fire. But the wheat they gather up and put it into the barn for safety and to keep it dry and so they can use it. And this applies to us, uh, I noticed definitely in verses 36 through 43 in the explanation when it talks about how he left the multitudes and his disciples came to him saying, please explain this to us. And he said that the one who says the seed is the son of man or Jesus and the field is the world, the, the good seed is the sons of the kingdom and the devil is the enemy. The, um, the, then the tares are the stumbling blocks and sins that we come across and how uh, the, the angels will come, remove all those, throw, cast them away, and they will also gather us up into safety as long as we stand firm. But how do we stand firm? I noticed that it's easiest if we surround ourselves with other Christians, other wheat, um, which will help us grow, help us deepen our roots, help us strengthen. For example, this week, I have received lots of encouragement and try to give out as much encouragement as possible too. And then there's also, we were studying scripture more in depth than pretty much I've ever done before. And we were praying a lot and just hanging out, just encouraging nonstop. And in the, my, as my conclusion, I'd like to notice that there are two definite rewards. There is the not being burned and being brought into the safety of God's kingdom. So if you are struggling with staying firm, I'd like to just ask, ask you to go to your close friends or family and ask them for support or encouragement. And I can almost guarantee you they will give it to you. Thank you.